Have you ever heard someone talk and think to yourself, crack cocaine is a terrible drug? What's gonna happen now? Money cometh to me now! That's what's gonna happen now. <laughs> that's, that's an update. That's an update. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Hear my theme music. All things theology, all things theology, we chop it up properly, without an apology, gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host K-Dub, and today we're going to be talking about Prophet Joshua Holmes. He has to be one of the biggest charlatans out there, you know, where he has all these lady followers taking on his last name and thinking he's Jesus. Well, I decided recently to torture myself and listen to a few of his sermons. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I did. I, I tortured myself. Um, <laughs> but I think there could be some teachable moments because this guy still has a following, unfortunately. So let's actually get into this video. Now in these last two minutes, two minute warning. In this last checkmate, the blood of Jesus is too strong and too mighty for your finances not to become rich and wealthy. Just in case you're wondering what this video about, this video literally is about how Jesus died to make you rich. And that's not even an overstatement. I mean, that literally says it. He's going to be more explicit later. But what? She take my money when I'm in need. I got bread in my pocket. Um, how dare you? He go on and put bread in the chat. Put a dollar bill in the chat because this man is all about the money. But you know we got to come after it. Is this going to get funky in here because I'm going to use a bunch of adjectives? Because the blood that Jesus had inside of him attracted kings when he was an infant, when he was a baby, a newborn. His blood? I mean, I thought it was him. He, he almost has some kind of fetish with the literal blood of Jesus. Like when we say the blood has power, we're speaking of his death, right? His death, his resurrection, not his like literal blood. Like could uh, th that's some kind of weird theology there. But they didn't come there because they were literally attracted to his blood. Like they could smell the scent and they just started following Jesus. What, what, what What's going on here? Out of life. <laughs> But don't worry, we're, we're just getting started. I'm going to try to restrain myself. Brought money cometh to his life. Be well, it wasn't money. It was it was gift. It was myrrh. And, you know, <laughs> they, they didn't bring cash. I mean, what is he talking about? Before he had even went go minister the word to any. Before he had ever got a job. Before he had ever went to school, anything. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out so you can understand. Before he literally did anything that this world would say needs to be done for you to make money, money already was arriving in his direction. The blood <laughs> of Jesus too strong. Jesus literally had nowhere to lay his head. I mean, for three years of his ministry was homeless. And his one of his false disciples, right? Why well, one? The only one was stealing money from him. Now people say, "Well, see, that's proof that he's rich." Well, you can be you can be poor and have your money stolen, so that doesn't prove he's rich. Yeah, Jesus was. Yeah, I, I, I know you're. I know you're thinking of many Bible passages like that. Don't make sense. Yeah, I understand. You read your Bible. For there to be any financial issue in your life. So when you get a revelation of the blood of Jesus, you understand that it's a yoke destroying element of the father to deal with your provisional problems.
The blood of Jesus is too powerful just for you to be a millionaire. <laughs> so the blood of Jesus doesn't just make you millionaires. It make you billionaires. Not only billionaires, gazillionaires, cavillions, gazillion. What? What is this guy talking about? Um, how dare you? This guy, he wants that bread, man. I got bread in my Yeah, he's all about that money, but he's talking about the blood of Jesus Christ is too too good to make you, you know, for you to not have more than you know, riches, right? But the problem is, the problem is the apostle Paul claims to be poor in 1 Corinthians 4, uh, verse 11. It says, to the present hour, we hunger and thirst. We are poorly dressed and buffeted and homeless. We labor working with our hands. Doesn't seem like they had all the ritz and glamour, right? But the blood of Christ isn't about making you physically rich. I mean, read read First Corinthians four eight through uh, thirteen. He's he's contrasting himself with the rich. It says, "Already you have become rich." Paul's Paul saying, "Hey, that's that's not the case for us, right? Already you have reigned. You become kings. That's not the case with us." Um, but they false teachers never let the Bible get in the way of their false teaching. That's that's for sure. The blood of Jesus too powerful just for you to be a multimillionaire. <laughs> my goodness. That's why the Bible said, "My God shall supply all your need according to His riches, according to His riches." Yes, all your needs, not your greeds and your wants. The yeah. You, you, you don't need to be a billionaire. What does the Bible say? Uh, First Timothy six, six, six through eight. If we have food and clothing, we'll be content with that. Now, this does this sound like a content man or a greedy man? Y'all put y'all put y'all answer in the chat. We know it's greedy in glory. So there's riches in the glory realm of God. And what does sin do? Make you fall short of the glory. So if I have the blood. And the blood is now, is not carrying the sin nature. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? But it was just my imagination. He's literally arguing sin makes you poor. This dude need to, he need to get up out of here. Turn off the lights. What? Um, how dare you? No, sir. What? No, Talk about, I mean, you're going to see a lot of eisegesis in this sermon. That should have been our word for the day. Eisegesis times 1000. Because this man is. Oh, you ever you ever heard of teaching so bad you lost for words that that's how this makes me. Of course, he got his ways you can get PayPal cash. App. <laughs> Nothing screams money like advertising ways to give right on the screen. I mean. <laughs> okay now i'm in the glory through the blood because this blood is carrying the glory nature the god nature the god image the god likeness and the riches in this glory it is a supplier to my life on earth so the blood of jesus is so massive in its ability that it brings the power to get wealth to the believer. Sir, you were just making this up. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. No, 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 no. Prophesy. You are literally making this up. The blood of Jesus. You know, this is the theology that teaches, you know, Jesus died to make you rich. No, sir. He died to save you from the wrath of god anything else you get is mercy and grace uh, but this is just greed and all sorts of covetous the blood of jesus when a person is operating in it it takes you out of just enough financial gain it brings you into a financial gain that's in alignment with the rich father that you have in heaven that made streets of gold. 
The same thing that people are killing each other for. The same thing that people are lying on each other for and cheating on each other for. He made it his footstool even in the heavenlies. So what are you doing for it? None of this, you see, none of this is Bible. This is this man's opinion and. But it was just my imagination. This guy right here, man. Um, how dare you? He made heaven out of gold. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus is carrying unlimited financial mantles. That when somebody received the blood of Jesus, all of your wealth is unlocked to come to you without any delay. Because Satan can't interfere with your personality anymore. Sir. Sir, where is this money? I've come to Christ. Many people in this chat have come to Christ. Put a dollar bill if you come to Christ because you need your money. <laughs> this man said if you come to Christ, you got it waiting on you. I got bread in my pocket. We're going to be playing that a lot today. But what did the Apostle Peter say in Acts chapter 3? Silver and gold I do not have. Well, the prophet Joshua Holmes, Peter would rebuke you. <laughs> no, sir. The Apostle P Peter would rebuke you, sir. No mindset and perception anymore. And now you are a student of the Holy Ghost for him to talk to you and tell you what to do to come out of your financial situation. The blood of Jesus break all witchcraft spirits so that you can sow seed how you want to sow seed. Sir, this is just all about money. Now, if you just said stop that witchcraft, you would have been right. But this is madness. I'm tired of your church. You can reap harvests how you want to reap harvests. You can live in the blessing and in the overflow. That's why David's saying my cut runneth over. You imagine he was saying that in the Old Testament. So what's going to happen in the New Testament? If his cup ran over pre-blood, what's going to happen to your cup post-blood? The blood of Jesus opened up the heavens for all financial miracles and wisdom to flow inside of a person, flow upon a person, for you to be exceedingly rich. Genesis chapter 12, uh, Genesis, what that is, Genesis 13, <laughs> Genesis 13 verse 2, <laughs> Abraham was, Abram was very rich in silver and gold and in cattle. Okay, that's the Old Testament. So what happens in the New Testament? Because Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says Christ redeemed you from the curse of the law being made a curse for you. For well, being poor isn't a curse necessarily. I mean. <laughs> he reigns on the just and the unjust the, the, the poor you always have with you uh, n being poor doesn't mean you're under a curse this is silly because ultimately what he was ultimately one of the fruit of the spirit should be richness right monetary gain you know that's that's nowhere there in the text now I'm not saying it's wrong to be rich I'm just saying being a Christian you know the blood of Christ being applied to you by faith does it make you rich? Uh, that's nowhere in the Bible. But this dude's going to get more <laughs> rebellious in his teaching. My goodness, I forgot how bad this is. It is written, cursed is he that hangeth upon the tree. Then Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, the next verse says that, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon you, that you might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. Yeah, but that promise... There is not speaking about um, <laughs> it's not speaking about money. <laughs> Go and read 10 through uh, 14. It's speaking about salvation. It's the promise is the promise of salvation, not money. See, you know, when you're when you're when you're greedy, you know, like a lot of these false teachers, the biggest thing you see in the Bible is God making people rich. Even when it's not there at all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So money cometh was on Abram in the Old Testament. Now it's telling you about the money cometh, the new version of it. 
this the update. You know how they got iPhone this and iPhone this? This the newest update. You know what? I, I, why, why doesn't he go to uh, the, um, <laughs> you know, why does he, you know, he wants to go to Abraham, who, who obviously had money. But why he doesn't go to the poor people in the Bible? You know, like Romans 15, 26, it says, for Macedonia and Achaia were pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the law, the Lord's people in Jerusalem. You know, the update he wants to talk about. Why doesn't he go to passages like that? Clearly, there were rich people and there were poor people among the saints. I mean, literally, James talks about <laughs> the wealthy class and the poor class in the same body and not to favor the rich over the poor. That makes no sense if they're all supposed to be, be rich. That's it's silly. The new covenant is a new update to your financial oh my lifestyle. It's a new the new covenant mentions in Jeremiah 31 mentions nothing about finances. Update to your provisional lifestyle. And imagine they had so much results in the Old Testament. What's going to happen now? This dude. What's going to happen now? Um, how Money dare you? Cometh to me now. That's what's gonna happen now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, he scared me a little bit because I didn't know that was coming. He scared me, dog. My goodness, you ain't gotta be yelling like that. Put a screaming emoji in the chat because this dude burst in my right eardrum. My goodness. <laughs> that, that's an update. That's an update. The update. The update. If they, if they could have that pre-blood, and I'm post-blood. <laughs> Money coming to me now. If, if, that's, if, if that was their pre-blood, and, and Solomon up there building a gold house, don't let no demon, these religious demons trick you and make you think that because you have understanding of the financial covenant, the wealth covenant that you have with God, that you, you, you bad. You so anybody who disagrees with him, one is a demon and he claims he has understanding, <laughs> sir. Out of life, out of life. Um, how dare you? Sir, you don't. Is this finna get funky in here? Because I'm finna use a bunch of adjectives. Sir, you don't. You lack understanding. You don't have it. All you're doing is pointing to rich people in the Bible and say, well, since they are rich, then that means the new covenant is, be is better. That means they're going to have more wealth. See, that is special pleading. This doesn't actually prove your case. See, this is why you don't have a verse that actually teaches what you're saying. The ones you do go to, they're all they're all look out of context. Every last one of them. Carnal. No, no, no. I can't be carnal if this is what God said that he wants to do for me. Are you crazy? <laughs> I'm carnal because I believe the Lord, my God. No. Nope. Second Chronicles 20, 20 say, if I believe the Lord, my God, I'm established. Yeah, you establish. All right. You stab establish in, a, in the mental institution. I mean, because the Bible ain't teaching others and you sound crazy. Yeah. But we have the demon. This is asinine, sir. None, the Bible, Jesus didn't die to make you rich. That's a lie from the pit of the hell. He died to make you righteous. Oh, give me that. Give me that righteousness over over money any day. Simon, the sorcerer. If I believe his prophet. I'm prosperous. I'm a prosper. Just think about that. <laughs> Thought about it too late. Just think about that. All financial miracles have been released into my life as I obey the Lord. In my finances. When I say miracles, I don't mean money just falling out of the sky while I do nothing. I, I just activated God to work in my financial situation. That's what I mean. Oh, congratulations. You allowed God to do something because you obeyed. So now you twisted God's arm because of your obedience. Now he has to give you something. Something tell me he ain't he ain't <laughs> he ain't rich as like he wants to think. Now, I do, I do know he lives in the Dallas area. Uh, so, hey, maybe maybe he could take a visit and uh, he could buy me lunch <laughs> since he rich. 
When I say financial miracles, I don't mean I do nothing and the Lord just going to make a way. Financial miracles means I did my part. Now he's going to do his part. And his part is miraculous. Because his genius, his wisdom, it's a miracle when it comes into full fruition. The blood of Jesus has given me a financial future that's greater than anything I've ever seen. My goodness. Just think about that concept. I'm, I'm saying that with myself, but I'm really saying that for you. I'm giving you a decree. The blood of Jesus has released all my finances to me on earth. The financial lifestyle I'm supposed to live, I receive it through the blood of Jesus. The debt cancellation, I'm supposed to experience it. I receive it through the blood of Jesus. The healing in my body, I receive Sir, get a job. Get a job. Pay them bills and get that debt out. You know, you can use, I can give you some resources. <laughs> you can use the, the snowball effect to get rid of that debt. You ain't got to blame God for your debt, man. You ain't got to do that. Through the blood of Jesus, the, 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 the soundness in my mind, the light in my mind, I receive it through the blood of Jesus. What happens when you let that blood of Jesus work in your financial situation? The blood is too powerful. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, right? You know the grace of the Lord Jesus, though he was rich, he became poor. That through his poverty, you might be made rich. You know, money hungry false teachers love that text. No, 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 no. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? It's not talking about money. It's talking about him coming from heaven to earth. Him 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 becoming a servant. Jesus <laughs> you know, Jesus did go I be again, if that's the case then wouldn't it be by grace? And we were literally every Christian would be rich. See, none of this, none of this makes sense. None of this makes sense at all. I don't care how you try to explain it according to the natural. The <laughs> Bible said that he, through his poverty at the cross, you have been made rich. Now you made rich. Again, I know you don't care how we explain it. That's because you don't care what the Bible has to say. It's not talking about money, sir. Get up there, sit there, talk about oh, they talk about oh, they talk about oh, they talk about mental, oh, they talk about mental. <laughs> what, what? How do you explain rich? Have you ever heard somebody say, "Oh, this 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 secular person, they're very rich," and then you tell us, so, "Oh, they talk about mental," or oh, it's talking about spiritual. This is silly. The Bible talks about God's uh, riches. You know, his, his grace, he richly lavishes on it. They ain't talking about money. The Bible actually uses the term rich, not in a monetary sense, numerous times. But he mocks that idea because he does not actually understand the Bible. Not at all. Not at all. What? What is you talking about? What is you talking? You have never heard somebody say that Oprah was rich. And then you talk about, oh, no, that don't mean that she got a lot of money. It mean that she just mentally rich. <laughs> this is silly. But spiritually, she's poor. So, yeah, physically, she has a lot of money. Spiritually, she's bankrupt. So I'm not sure you want to use Oprah as your go to uh, argument there. You never heard somebody say that that uh, somebody rich on the outside and they you, oh, it's just mental. The Bible said that Jesus, through his death. He had a segment of his death that solidified you being rich on earth. Hallelujah. I received the riches that you have for me, Father, through the blood. Through the blood of the Lamb. I, I received the riches through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the lamb that was slain. Oh. Hallelujah. To the lamb that was slain. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Hallelujah. Boy, ain't no way, boy. 
to no, 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 no. that was slain forevermore you're alive all right all right <laughs> but notice he is exuberantly singing because he wants money coming to me now she take my money right well i'm in need go and throw a coin bag in the chat no jesus did not die to make you rich he died to make us righteous and that is far greater that is far greater because guess what there's gonna be rich people in hell you, you a rich young ruler it's gonna be rich people in hell there's going to be poor people in heaven. Now, there's going to be rich people in heaven, too. But again, what I'm saying is our monetary status does not um, design us to either one. Faith in the Lamb of God. You know, the Lamb of God you were singing about. Yeah, let's sing about that. Righteousness, justification, salvation, right? The greatest gift God has ever given man. Right standing with God. Though we've broken his law. Oh, yeah, I, I had to talk about that because there are many in the false teachers, you know, prosperity gospel that are they love to talk about physical richness. Again, it's great to be uh, physically wealthy. Hey, I'm not knocking you. Uh, one, don't do it by false teaching. But two, it doesn't make you right with God. It's not a fruit of the spirit. Hope you guys enjoy this video to the next time. Grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below. Hey.